Hi, I'm Nancy Nangeroni. And I'm Gordine McKenzie. And this is Gender Vision. <laughs> Lots of people making big bucks. You and me, babe, I see we're out of love. Well, I heard a voice from a high bar. It don't cost a thing just to be in love. We don't have any. Hi, this is Gender Vision, and we are pleased to be back here in 2009 for our second season of programming. Hopefully, we'll do more than eight shows this season. Hopefully, we'll get one out every With month. With a new administration. With a new administration. And hope. <laughs> the, this is really the first progressive administration in my lifetime, um, ah. because I don't think Kennedy was progressive. He was liberal. What about Clinton? And, no, I wouldn't have said he was pro progressive. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we are thrilled. We're thrilled. We're positive looking forward. Um, I'm sure there's good things coming. We're going to get through this economic stuff. And, uh, but you didn't tune in to us to, walk, to hear about Obama. Um, but we do have a few little tidbits for you right at the beginning. Uh, first off, um, the Obama agenda, uh, there's some historic firsts already uh, from the Obama administration. If you go to the whitehouse.gov website, and you click on agenda, the first item is civil rights. And if you click on civil rights, the first item in civil rights, the first bullet point includes a commitment not just to advocate for, but to pass uh, employment non-discrimination amendment that would um, make illegal discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. And this is uh, the first time a uh, presidential administration has committed to uh, providing protections uh, on the basis of gender identity, which is um, protecting transgender people like myself, protecting our employment rights. We have upwards of 70% on and under employment, um, and so this is a, a very welcome shift. It's also welcome for partners and, and families for everyone. Of, of transgender yeah, persons and friends, too. Yeah. And really very, very hopeful. You know, there, there is a lot of good news. Sometimes it looks grim, but, but there's always something that kind of comes through. We have a clip of Gene Robinson, who is the Episcopal minister, openly gay minister, who lives in a same-sex marriage that began some of the inaugural activities at the Lincoln Memorial the day before the actual inauguration. That's right. Um, there, there is a little dispute in terms of when they did the coverage that it was not included on the HBO uh, coverage. But a lot of people thought that might be the antidote to some of Rick Warren's, uh, the anxiety about having Rick Warren who gave the prayer invocation. And Rick Warren had uh, a site that said, we do not allow homosexuals into our ministry. He also had said... A statement, said, by the way, that he did, that has he, been he removed. He did remove that. However, he did grant some interviews on right. uh, network television, and he said uh, he equated homosexuals still with pedophilia, with some type of uh, sickness, and yes. he believes that they can be cured. So it was nice to see Gene Robinson, and if you notice in Gene Robinson when he's talking, in his very opening statements, he includes LGBT people, and he says transgender. That's right. That was at the Lincoln Memorial, so let's go to that. So let's watch this clip. Bless this nation with anger. Anger at discrimination at home and abroad, against refugees and immigrants, women, people of color, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. And we also have good news from Europe. We have a commissioner with the Council of Europe Commission for Human Rights who um, published a viewpoint on, uh, I believe it was January 5th of 2009. And this viewpoint I, uh, says discrimination against transgender persons must no longer be tolerated. And this is a viewpoint that uh, will be um, read throughout the European Union. And this is an important principle that's been stated by the Commission on Human Rights 
and uh, we're very pleased to have this uh, in Europe. It's, a, it's, a, it's some real right. progress, again, for just the basic civil rights of transgender people. Civil rights and human rights, huge, huge jump that this is now the, the language right. that, that we're talking about. Some other good news is uh, GLSEN teamed up with the Ad Council. And GLSEN is the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Educators Network. Yep, and how many of you have ever uh, used the term or heard, it's so gay? Not a complimentary. Heard it. <laughs> yeah, not a, not used it, but not a complimentary term. And a lot of people just use it unconsciously. Well, these ads really make you think about it. So kudos to to Glisten and the Ad Council for putting these out on network television. Yes, and we have we we have one for you here. I, I just love it. I think you will. Times they are a changing. They are a changing. So check out this video, this ad. So are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. So we're here on this program to talk about feminism, sexuality, and gender. And, and Gordine, can you kind of uh, lead us into this discussion? Well, there, there's so much to say there, but um, I think one of the things to pay attention to is that our conceptions about sexuality have changed. If we go from the fourth century to the 1700s, historians about, uh, that do work on sexuality noted that female pleasure was taken into account because they didn't think a female could give birth unless she, or procreate, unless she had an orgasm. She couldn't conceive, she couldn't get pregnant. So female pleasure was uh, at one time considered in the debate. And the old model used to see female genitalia and organs just like an inverse of what male genitalia was. So there was kind of uh, an equality and a right to pleasure. Less strict, less strict yeah. differentiation. Yeah, we didn't have, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus and that erroneous stuff and nobody's from Earth, but <laughs> that, that takes a <laughs> while. Uh, we get into the 1700s, from the 1700s uh, through like the 1880s, uh, we look at sex based on procreation. We don't see sex as pleasure and we don't hear a lot about pleasure. In fact, at the end of the 1800s, what we get in Germany, England, and the United States is we get sexologists that start to classify sexuality. By the way, the, the term heterosexual was first used to refer to a perversion. It meant a person who had psychical hermaphroditism, meaning they were attracted to both sexes. And that term came out in the 1890s, so did the term homosexual. And the use of the term homosexual originally referred to what we would think transgender people are, are today. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's really interesting so if you look at the terminology. Time, this was a time when science sort of, and social science dedicated itself to classifying things, uh, to dividing. But not with mor out morality and values. That science came with values and morality in terms of it said, this is good sexuality, this is abnormal. Heterosexuality rises to the top and homosexuality or any other type of sexuality or gender becomes aberrant. Men, men who feel themselves to be women, et cetera, that all starts to fall down. And that's our early, early sexology, our ideas. We're still based on a procreation model, so anything that isn't uh, for procreation around sex is bad until we get into like the 1950s, and there are some shifts in the 20s as well. But 1950s, Kinsey studies begins to look at sex as pleasure and sex in marriage as being, as being very pleasurable. And so, as Gail Rubin says, uh, who's a scholar on sexuality and gender feminist, it's time to start thinking about sex because people can become dangerously crazy about sex. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Thank you. 